my gosh, I'm so bored. Yeah, being an elephant tusk is so boring. Oh my gosh, why can't I just stop being an elephant tusk? Well, we're here anyway, let's try to make the most of it. Hey, welcome to our scene on Bordetella pertussis, represented by these bored tusks. These elephant tusks are really bored. Well, they don't know what's going on behind them, and that's probably why they're bored. If they knew the craziness of this scene, they probably wouldn't be bored. And let's describe the craziness over here. By the way, before we get to the back, we just know that this elephant in his trunk over here has this respiratory droplet. To help us remember that the disease whooping cough caused by bored pertussis is transmitted through respiratory secretions. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. So sitting on top of the elephant over here, is this guy. This guy's gonna remind us of the structure of Border Patella pertussis. We see that it's gram negative, right? It's like pinkish, reddish, you know, and gram staining appears that color because it's thin peptidoglycan wall. And we also know that he's not really a sphere nor a rod, he's somewhere in between. He's a coxobacillus. Border Patella pertussis is a coxobacillus. There's a lot of virulent factors, but we see this one over here, this filamentous virulent factor on top of his head. Filamentous hemagglutinin, an adhesin that binds to epithelium of hosts. Let's take a look at what's about happening behind the elephant. So here's this GI guy, right? He's a G, but he's holding I. Devil's remember GI. He's gonna represent the GI protein. And this guy on top of the elephant, the board of teleprotesis guy, threw this ADP rye bread, the rye bread into him. He threw the rye bread into him and that slowed him down. That's because Bordetella pertussis has a toxin, which ADP ribosylate is actually the pertussis toxin, and that ADP ribosylates GI proteins, which inhibits them. That's why the GI protein here is being stopped. You know what? To make it more memorable, we'll have him exploding. So, so what happened was when he exploded, this camp tent went up. This camp tent went up, which helps us remember that there's an overproduction of CAMP after GI stops. And that's because the GI inhibits protein prevents the conversion of ATP to CAMP. So if GI protein is stopped, CAMP will go up. And when CAMP goes up, it disrupts a lot of signaling. By the way, the adenocyclase toxin directly leads to the increase in CAMP because it mimics adenocyclase, just like it does in Bacillus anthracis. But anyway, the increase in CAMP leads to the following. Most notably, the lymphocytosis. And that's because GI blocks chemokine signaling of lymphocytes to the lymph node. So if GI is out, then the lymphocytes won't know how to get to the lymph node, and they'll be in the blood. This lymph node actually has a friend who came to join him, this insect. This insect in our videos represents insulin. Insect for insulin, because insulin is also increased due to the interrupted signaling. And when insulin is increased, it leads to things like hypoglycemia, because there's not going to be enough sugar in the blood. Bordetella pertussis toxin also threw this T into this silly A. You see this A over here? He's silly, right? He's a silly A or silly A. T toxin or tracheal cytotoxin represented by the T destroys ciliated respiratory epithelial cells. What's going on in front of this silly A guy? Let's take a look. The silly A guy here was having a little bit of fun, and he wrote this stuff in the grass over here. And this is going to help us remember the three clinical stages of Bordetella pertussis infection. First is the catarrhal stage, represented by low-grade fevers, and that's why you have this random thermometer coming down from this guy, and coryza. C for coryza, right? So C has catarrhal and C for coryza. Then we have the paroxysmal phase, which is characterized by paroxysms of intense cough. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Followed by inspiratory whooping cough. And it's also characterized by post-tussive vomiting. Post-tussive vomiting is vomiting after coughing. And we have the mouth over here that's coughing to help us remember the cough associated with whooping cough. Then there's the convalescent phase that's characterized by a gradual recovery from chronic cough. We note this crow over here that's made of a mac, a subway mac. This crow with a mac is to help us remember the macrolides that are effective against bordelal pertussis. If someone's allergic to that, they should take TMP SMX. And there's a syringe in him to help us remember that there's a syringe, the DTAP vaccine, which should be given to children to prevent whooping cough. All right, that is our insane video on Bordetella pertussis. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe to this channel. It means a lot to me. And leave your comments. Feedback is great. I would love to make these videos better. And take care.